Hello guys and gals, welcome to a new tutorial. In this video, we're going to be covering some side-scroller stuff. Uh, we're going to be covering how we can get platforms like these that you can jump through the bottom of and land on the top of. Just like so. Um, there are going to be a few glitches as we go through this, but I'm going to show you guys how we work those out and how we can get this nice smooth transition between top and bottom. As you can see there. Now this is just a simple blueprint, it's been requested a lot on the channel, it's been requested a lot on the forums, it's been requested a lot in the Unreal 4 Facebook groups, and I can't seem to find any videos about this online, um, so I'm giving it a go, yay, rejoice. So let's get this started, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete the previous blueprints, right click, blueprint class, actor, we're going to call this platforms underscore BP which is a slight change on what I previously had open this up add a component now I'm just going to be using a cube now the reason I'm going to be using a cube is because it just allows me to quickly um, prototype here so I'm going to make a nice long platform give it a bit of width compile this then drag this into our world to make sure that our characters able to use this appropriately this one is a little bit crushed there there we are now one thing that I want to just quickly check for testing is that when we jump our character's feet are above the platform you can see that they are just there. Obviously you can fix that by giving the character a bit more jump height um, but I'm just leaving that for default for now. So we've got that sorted what we're going to do is drag the cube onto default scene root just so we make the cube the actual default scene root itself Then we're going to add a component and this is going to be a box collision. Now, with our box collision selected, I'm just going to raise him up. You can see here he's not quite big enough. I need this to encapsulate the entire platform. Now, the reason this has to cover the whole platform is because I need the character to always use this, uh, should it need to. I'm going to raise this up a little. We'll compile that there and check where that is in relation to our character. So, I don't want this to be a full character's height but I need the character's height to be able to touch that on jump that looks about right there yeah <clears throat> now the reason I'm doing that is just to make sure that the character is always going to have space to land uh, doesn't activate the collision too early um, but can still reach it should he be jumping from below which in this case he should be able to so we're going to open this back up we're going to get rid of event tick and actor overlap because we don't need these what we do need is the begin play drag out from cube and then what we're going to do is set collision response to channel plug this into event play uh, event begin play uh, response ignore channel pawn now the reason we're doing this is because our character itself is a pawn if we scroll down here you can see that we've got collision presets pawn for the capsule component um, that allows the character to be controlled by the player you can see now if we jump through there's no collision, it's totally ignoring our lovely, lovely uh, character. Hooray! So we'll open that back up. What we'll then do is select box, add event, and begin overlap. Then we will get player character. From other actor, we will say equal object, plug char player character into this. This will return a boolean. So we are going to use a branch throw. So our condition is going to be, is the the other actor the player character? Well, if it is, what do we want to do? What we want to do is take our collision response channel and set this to block. So if we compile this now, if we press play, you can see now it's blocking him, but it's continuously blocking him. And the eagle-eyed of blue will see just there, there's that little flick. Now the reason that little flick's occurring is because when we first jump up through the platform the character is activating the collision before the full body is through the floor so what it's doing is the floor is checking uh, how much of a percentage of this model is above and below and then it's just pushing it to whichever one it's going to be able to, uh, in whichever direction it's going to quickly get rid of that uh, that nasty overlapping which is going to be above because we've got more than 50% of the character above to in this space here so let's quickly fix these things. Uh, box, right click, add event on end overlap. 
Same deal here, we're just going to copy all of this logic. And plug it all in. There we are. But obviously when we end overlap, we want to ignore the pawn again. Now, if we were to head in, when we leave the box, we can then jump up through it again. But we're still getting that nasty flick based on um, the overlap percentage. So to get rid of this, what we're going to do is, before we block pawn, what we will do is give a small delay. We're just going to leave this as a, the default 0 0.2 in that delay. And now when we jump up through the bottom, the collisions don't activate straight away. So we get that nice smooth transition where the character lands as he should. Nice. The issue with this, however, is if we're coming from above, we're still getting that delay, so we're getting this really jarred landing. Now this is a bit more obvious to see if we've got some more platforms, so let's just quickly pop a couple more in. Like so. So if now we're over here, and doink, you see that nasty jarring effect. To get rid of the jarring effect, um, we're going to need to just check a few more things before we uh, add the block response. What we need to do is we need to find out whether or not the player was previously or currently above or below a cube. The reason we're going to be using the cube is it's because the cube is where the collisions are going to occur, not the box itself. Uh, the player is always going to be... Oh, well, not always, but a lot of the time the player is going to be below the box. Um, so we, we don't want to use the box itself, we're going to use cube. So what we're going to do is drag cube out, get world location. We need world uh, data here. We don't want to know where it is locally. We need to know where it is in the world so we can compare this properly. From the get player character, we want to get world location. Now we're going to get world location of mesh. Now the reason we're going to get the world location of the mesh um, is it's just um, a slight logic thing. Um, the capsule that the player is inside, the player character is inside, um, has its origin point at about halfway, um, halfway up the capsule. So the capsule expands outwards from the center uh, when you resize it. The mesh has its pivot point at the very bottom of the character, so at the feet. Um, we need to know the lowest point of the character's mesh itself, not the midway point. So by using the mesh, we can guarantee that we're always looking at the lowest point on the um, the player character. What we're then going to do is we're just going to break the vectors. And the reason we're breaking the vectors is because we only need to know the height. We don't need the X or the Y data. And what we're going to do is from the mesh's Z, uh, the player character mesh rather, uh, we're going to say, is it greater than? So we'll float greater than a float. And if it's greater than where our cube is, so if it's higher, then we're going to branch. <coughs> branch. Greater than. So, if our player character is currently higher than the box, then don't delay. Just set the collision. If it's not lower than, uh, higher than the box, then delay. We'll compile that. And now we don't get a delay from below. Oh, rather, we do get a delay from above, uh, below, but we don't get a delay from the top. So you can see here we're getting this nice smooth landing. And that's how we can set up side scrolling platforms that you can jump through the bottom of and land nicely on the top of. Hopefully, uh, some of you guys are going to find that. Um, you know, useful for your project. It's turned into a bit of a spaghetti fest. But there you are. Um, hopefully some of you guys are going to be able to find this useful. I'm just rearranging this so you guys can see this in a slightly better way. There we are. And you'll be able to use that in your projects. Um, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.